Hey guys, it's Robert again. I want to say thanks for liking and subscribing to my channel. If you are new here, check out my videos. And if you do like it, please subscribe below. And if you guys already are my subscribers, appreciate you coming back. Today we're not going to be talking about Hard Shell Taco. Today we're actually going to be talking about my wife's RX350 and what I need to do today. And today I need to do an oil change. It's got about, um, I think 18,000 miles on it. And here's the little gimme that I'm actually surprised. So I'm doing an oil change with that low of a mileage myself, not just because I like to do my own oil changes, but because Lexus, which is part of Toyota, only gives oil changes at 10,000 miles. That's right, 10,000 miles. But what's weird is that the Toyotas do 20,000 miles. So um, I don't get it. It's about the same amount of oil. It's exactly the same filter. It uses Toyota brands. There's no Lexus brand part yet. They don't give you an oil change of 20,000 miles. So be it. So I am going to be working on this car. So I got some tools from Moto of X that I got from my Tacoma and it actually will fit the RX350 and my mom's NX200T if I decide to do oil change. So let's go over what I got. The items I got here, first of all, I got some kind of ramps. You can use jack stands and a jack, but I happen to have ramps, so hopefully I could drive up on it. The reason why is because this is a little bit lower than the truck, so it's gonna be hard to access the bottom. I mean, I could probably work it, but I think with a ramp, it's just gonna make my life easier. So besides the ramp, you need some kind of oil container to catch oil. Now, of course you need the oil. These cars actually use Synthetic 0W20 and I choose Mobile One because Mobile One is just well known and uh, Hasn't given me any trouble Gotta have some rags Some gloves you could use your bare hands if you want a ratchet and various sockets I will put everything in the description as far as what you need also These are the Moav X tools I got so I really like this one This is a forged oil cap wrench to get that out takes a lot of force to actually break it so this is legit this is my favorite thing and i think this is a must to own optional things you can get is this oil filler funnel it actually fits perfectly in the oil filler and you can fill it up very quickly because of the size of that opening so i'll be showing you how that looks and also lastly this here will help drain oil out of the cartridge and that way you don't have a big mess. Oh, one thing I totally forgot. You gotta have yourself the oil filter. So this is the oil filter I got. It's a paper element. It's got its gaskets and everything built in. Alright, looking at the front of the Lexus, if you look towards the passenger side, and you get underneath there, you can see right in front is where the oil filter cartridge is, and just right behind it is the oil drain plug. So it's in a nice spot, very easy to access. They used to put uh, a lot of plastic covering on, on this, at least Lexus did before Toyota, but I guess they don't want to do it now. So it's a pro and con, obviously if you're, uh, you'll be able to see the leaks easier if you have any issues, which is kind of a good thing. So I think I'll be able to knock this one out, hopefully faster than I thought. What I like to do too, I forgot to add, is I like to find a piece of cardboard to use because chances are oil will drip from here to here or past here. So let's go ahead and get some tools and start working on this. It's 14. All right, 14 mil. It's always lefty Lucy, by the way. It's hot. While I was doing that one, I'm gonna go ahead and let it drain out a little bit so I can move the 
oil pan closer to here just in case I get some oil leakage as well. So it's starting to drip a little straighter. So now let's move it. Hopefully I'm close enough. Let's get I'm close enough to my pan. So we're gonna take off this bottom canister deal. See how much oil comes out of this. Not much. That's good. And the reason why I shouldn't because you're supposed to insert something in here um, to do it. Let me demonstrate what you usually get in the box of the oil chain of the oil filter housing. So not only you get gaskets and the oil filter. It's a little bit windy. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. You get this little gasket thing and it's supposed to insert in here hard and then drip out oil. But Motiv X came with this little device, which is kind of cool that I kind of like. It's supposed to help with being less messy. So it's got this tube. We're backing this out so it doesn't put any pressure on it. And then we're going to twist this on. And of course my neighbor wants to be cool with his exhaust. I actually just finger tighten this from my experience. It never um, it never really leaked when I tried it before. So I think it'll be okay like that. So we can test it out. So you can see it's kind of curved downward. I might have to help it. So now we're gonna twist this guy. And you can see the oil is already starting to come out. I'll raise this up so you can see it as well. So that helps reduce the mess. The wind caught this oil here and it went actually past the pan. So now you can see it's dripping out here, not out here, so you have less of a mess. And the reason why is because this canister, it's like a cup and it's got oil on the bottom of this canister and we're draining it so when I remove this cup or this canister, it doesn't just have a bunch of oil that'll pop off from the top like a full cup of water. So it's just basically us waiting for it to drain. All right, well, this is done here. So let's go ahead and back this out first. And then we'll take this out. And this is the reason why I didn't use a wrench because I didn't want to uh, make it too tight. That'd be more challenging to take this off. So as you can see, it's not dripping too much, only a little bit from here. And now I'm trying to wait till that finishes before I plug it up. So again, the reason why I like this thing is because it's all forged aluminum. It's got little openings here to kind of lock the cartridge and also these um, notches or these edges to kind of pop on there. And uh, you can use a socket or in the hair, but if you need more um, leverage, you would use a larger, uh, you would use an extension or ratchet in here. But if you need a um, more torque, you would use, um, I think it's a 20, 24 millimeter socket up here to have more force. Let's see how tight this is. Oh, really tight. Oh, not bad. So now, so much oil is going to drip, if any. Not much. Not much because we drained it already. That's good. You can see just by tipping it over, there's not a lot of oil. That's messy. You know what? All right. So um, if we hadn't drained it here when I removed everything, it would have been a lot more oil. Um, so this does 
this is something I suggest to do. You don't have to, but it gets, uh, it helps you with having less of a mess. And this housing is plastic, so um, usually I've seen an upgrade that you can actually get this in metal, or aluminum I should say. And you can see there's an old gasket right there we need to get out. I like to use a pick so you don't mess up anything that, or damage anything in here. Because if you do damage it, you can cause leaks. So that's how easy it is to get out. The other one came out pretty easy, which would be right here. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to coat it with some oil first. Fresh oil, of course. And then I'll stick it in here. Fits nice and perfect in there. I'm going to finger tighten this. Once I mount it, I'll make this a little bit tighter. And I'll put all the torque specs that you need for this. I just want to make sure it doesn't fall out. Alright, so now got that. Now I'm going to get fresh oil and put it on this guy. The reason why you put fresh oil, first of all, you don't want it to be dirty, but second of all, so that way it ends up making a nice seal. So now we're going to stick it in here, make sure it's even all the way around. Now, don't forget your paper element. I suggest getting Toyota brand. You can get any brand you want, but I mean, these are not that expensive. I think they're like seven bucks or less or around there. Um, just get the, paper, the Toyota OEM ones just to be safe. You just insert it like that. It's a little springy. Or what I like to do too is like I like to fill it up with some oil. Um, so that way when it starts, there's something in here to circulate immediately. So let's go ahead and do that. Whoops. Make sure you pay attention how much oil you're putting in. <laughs> Not like me. Oops. Uh, make sure you do it by hand. Never use, never use the wrench right away because that way you ensure you're not going to cross thread anything. So, that's pretty snug. Alright, so here's the crush washer. It's coated on both sides. Get that through Toyota. It's not that expensive. You can see how it fits perfectly. So let's stick that back in there. wipe down everything tighten everything up now like I said um, I'll put the actual torque measurements in the description of the video so you can have your specific information um, I'm old school I just make it snug but to be proper and to make sure I give you proper information I will give you torque specs Alright, so we got the uh, Motivex uh, oil filler funnel. So the oil fill, engine oil cap is right here. It sounds super snug, so you're gonna have to kind of work it sometimes. And there's your cap. Let's move over there, it doesn't fall down. And it's really easy to put this on. nice and snug. The one thing I noticed about this funnel in the RX350 versus my Tacoma is that it is actually totally almost vertical. In the Tacoma it was actually slanted out here at an angle. It still poured fine but I felt that it could have spilled through the funnel which it didn't but it, it was fine. This doesn't have a tow package. My understanding is that the oil level is about 5.7 or 5.8 quarts. I bought this huge jug for Amazon and it's a zero W20 uh, synthetic oil. And again, it's five quarts. It takes 5.7 about. I could pour basically everything here and I'd be concerned of overfilling. You guys will be amazed how fast this, this funnel works as far as not leaking and uh, getting oil in there. So this is five quarts. I like to hold it at an angle on the side so it doesn't gurgle. 
If you notice that I go like this, it gurbles more. But if I hold it sideways, it doesn't gurble. And now look how much oil I can pour and how fast. See that? I just dumped five quarts of oil that fast. So I had a little left oil, oil from my other truck, a little bit less than half a bottle. So that should be under the 5.7 quarts. What I want to do with the rest of it is I actually want to get the SUV off of the ramps so I have a level measurement. Another reason why I like to use the cardboard, because you can see it had a little bit of a spill here because the wind actually blew the oil a little bit on the ground, so I protected that. And not only that, you can see all my tools and everything's right on the cardboard. And instead of getting underneath, I simply just yank it all out the way. And now I got less need to crawl underneath. All right, been about five minutes or so. I went in and cleaned up all the oil and everything that I had on the ground for recycling. So I always remember to recycle. So it's a little easier to read. Let's see if I can get a reading in here for you guys. Come on, Mr. Focus. There we go. So now, got my nose out of focus. So now the oil is closer to where my fingernail is. Still hard to read, but it's above where you want. Do not go under the first dot, which I'm not, and do not go over. So I'm just going to add a little bit more, and then I'll check my oil. But again, do not overfill. Always try to keep it below. So we're good. What I like about this is that it's actually not messy. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It has a little bit of this lip here, so it keeps the oil from dripping. So you can see when I pour it, usually when you pour oil, you tend to have a mess. And that doesn't do it, so now I'm just going to oil cap it. Last thing we need to do is reset this maintenance required reminder. So you're gonna use these arrows here and the button. So vehicle settings, oh this car's dirty. Oil maintenance. Reset data, yes. You're using this middle button. Has been reset. And then you can do whatever you want. All right, there you have it. That's how you do an oil change in a 2017 Toyota RX350. It actually is one of the easiest oil changes that I've done recently. Not too messy because of the more of X items that um, I've been testing. And uh, it definitely is a winner as far as products. Uh, make sure you dispose of your oil properly. And I will put everything in the description as far as what I got and the torque ratings that you should set everything to. So I want to say thanks again for watching this video and my channel. Please subscribe if you haven't. Peace out guys.